Thank you. All right. Um, of course, everybody knows this is the uh, cultural portion of the service. Um, and we'll get started with the cultural. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all thy getting, get understanding. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Last Shabbat, we kind of veered away from uh, cultural specifically and began to look at heritage and inheritance. We went all the way back to the beginning, better she or Genesis. We went to Shemot or Exodus and we concluded in Debarim or Deuteronomy. And in those five books, including Leviticus and Numbers, those five books commonly referred to as Torah. And we went there to demonstrate that Torah principles were cherished and passed on from Adam to his seed, from generation to generation, all the way through the flood and from Noah and his three sons, generation to generation, from Abraham to Yitzchak, down to Yaqua, Jacob, better known as Yisrael. These are the keepers of the flame, so to speak, the candle bearers dedicated to the most high. And by definition, that's heritage. That's heritage. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on, heritage and inheritance. And Toda Rabah Moray Baruch, if you're on, uh, for that powerful message last night. And uh, I hope you don't mind me borrowing, <laughs> borrowing from, uh, from your lesson. All right, let's take a look at another inheritance. Like last Shabbat, we looked at um, Deuteronomy 28, right? All the blessings and all the cursings as inheritance. I want to take another look uh, at another inheritance, which is cultural. And if it's cultural, then it's part of our heritage. Worthy to be passed on to the next generation, beginning as early as birth. That's heritage. That inheritance, that heritage begins at birth. The language, the history, the dress, the Elohim that we worship all begins at birth as a heritage. And that's what's passed on to generation and generation as an inheritance. So getting wisdom is the principal thing, the primary thing, the chief thing. And we all know wisdom, chachma in Hebrew, chacham is the root word. And it really boils down to being skillful skillful. And so what is skillful? <laughs> Being skillful, but what is it? Skillful, right? The root word is skill. And that's the ability to use one's knowledge effectively and readily in execution or performance. It's also dexterity or coordination, especially in the execution of learn physical tasks. It's a learned power of doing something competently, a developed aptitude or ability. That's a, reaching a level of understanding. That's skillful. So if being skillful is the principal thing, how do we become skillful? How do we become wise? Chacham. And what does this have to do with heritage and inheritance? Let's go to Mishli or Proverbs chapter one, and we're going to read verse seven. Mishli, commonly called Proverbs chapter one, we're going to read verse seven. And it reads, the fear of Yah is the beginning of knowledge. 
the fear of Yah is the beginning of knowledge. And this is not a different translation. This is not a different translation. We know that the fear of Yah is also the beginning of wisdom. But it's also here in Mishli and Proverbs, the fear of Yah is the beginning of knowledge. And it says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Knowledge, that word in Hebrew is da'ath or da'ath. The root is yada. And we know yada is to know. And to know is to be intimately familiar. Familiar with what? Familiar with what? So knowledge is when you have gained information based on facts or truth, usually through experience. For example, you can read on gardening for years and now you have become intelligent in gardening. The types of soil, the seeds, the water, the fertilizer, et cetera. But until you put your hands in the soil and experience what that feels like or smells like, then all you've done is gathered information. And in the military, we got a whole company that the whole job is to gather intelligence, just to gather intel. But until we have experience in that, then all we have is intelligence. We don't have the knowledge yet. Of course, you can become more knowledgeable through somebody else's experiences. They have put their hands in the soil, but they have to be able to tell you what that feels like. They have to be able to communicate to you what that smells like, what that looks like. And then you gain a little bit more knowledge, but until you experience it yourself, you don't have all the knowledge. This will make more sense the further we go along. So now let's go back up to Verse one of this chapter, Mishliai, Proverbs chapter one, and we're going to start at verse one and read through seven. This is Mishliai, Proverbs chapter one, starting at the top. And it says, the proverb of Shlomo, Solomon, the son of Dawid, David, king of Yisrael, to know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtly to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discernment and uh, discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Verse six, to understand a proverb and, to in, and the interpretation, the words of the wise, and their dark sayings. Here's the point. The fear of Yah is the beginning of that knowledge. It's the beginning of that knowledge. It says, my, verse eight, my son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. And when it says when a man despises knowledge, that despise right there is just what you think. It, it's that too to have a disdain for. But in this context, it's talking about 
have no regard for. You regard it as being insignificant. And if you remember, that's the same thing Esau was. Esau despised that knowledge. When Yaquab, when Jacob was sitting in the tent, the councils of wisdom, Esau decided he'd rather be out hunting. That's what it's talking about. And like I said, this will make more sense as we go along. And we're talking about skill, truth, knowledge, experience is all wrapped up in wisdom, which is the principal thing to get. It's that ability to use one's knowledge effectively in execution, in accomplishing a task or a duty. Let me say that again. Wisdom, that's the ability to use one's knowledge, that experience you gained out of the truth. The ability to use one's knowledge effectively in execution in accomplishing a task or a duty. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus. That's in the Apocrypha, commonly called Syrac. And we're gonna go to chapter one. Well, I'll start off in the prologue, but we're going to go to chapter 45. So y'all can turn to chapter 45. And we're going to read verses 25. We're going to start at verse 25. But I'm going to read the prologue. And in some translations, it's called, it starts at chapter one, verse one. But in my version, the King James version, they have it separated as the prologue. All right. While y'all turn into that chapter 45, I'm going to start at verse 25. I'm going to read a portion of this prologue. It says, the wisdom of Yahawashai, Yahusha, Joshua, the son of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus. This is the prologue. The prologue of the wisdom of Yahawashai, or Joshua, the son of Sirach. Whereas many and great things have been delivered unto us by the law and the prophets and by, the, by, and by others that have, followed, that have followed their steps. It's kind of dark up here, Sleeka. That have followed their steps. For the which things Israel ought to be commended for learning and wisdom and wherefore and whereof not only the readers must needs become skillful themselves, but also they that desire to learn, be able to profit from which are without, to profit them which are without both by speaking and writing. My grandfather, Yahweh Shai, Joshua, Yahusha, when he had much given himself to the reading of the law, Torah, and the prophets, Nabaim, and other books, Sephar, Sepharim, of our fathers, and had gotten therein good judgment, was drawn on also himself to write, was drawn on also himself to write something pertaining to Shlika. Okay, was drawn on also himself to write something pertaining to learning and wisdom, to learning and wisdom, to the intent 
that those which are desirous to learn and are addicted to these things Holy God, this is, this is kind of shadowy up here. I'm sorry. Okay. Which are desirous to learn and are addicted to those things which profit much more in living according to the law. I know that was hard to go through. But what he's saying here is they labored. This, this Yahweh Shai, the son of Sarat, they labored to preserve Torah, to preserve this wisdom and to write it down so that it can be passed down, so that it can be preserved. And again, that's the definition of heritage. So now let's go to, to uh, 45. Let's see if I can read this. You got it? Can you see it? Can you read that for me? 45, starting at 25. Wait, just 25. 25 and 26. Toda. All right, this is a Ecclesiastes on Sarat. Can y'all hear that? Ecclesiastes on Sarat. Somebody put a thumbs up. Can y'all hear that? Kane. 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 All right. Please, please ask us. 45 verse 25. According to the covenant made with David, son of Jesse, of the tribe of Judah, that the inheritance of the king should be to his posterity alone. So the inheritance of Aaron should also be to his seed. Elian gave give you wisdom in your heart to judge his people in righteousness, that their good things be not abolished, and that their glory may be may endure forever. Hallelujah. yeah, Toda, Toda. So it says, according to the covenant made with Dawid, son of Jesse, of the tribe of Yehuda, mm -hmm. that the inheritance, that the inheritance of the king should be to his posterity. His posterity is his children, his, his, his seed, the generations after him. So the inheritance of Aharon should also be unto his seed, the Levitical priesthood. It's an inheritance, heritage passed down. It says the most high, the most high give you wisdom. The most high give you wisdom. All this acquiring information, the truth, knowledge, experience. That's how we get wisdom, but that's how we seek wisdom out. That's how we seek wisdom out, but it's the most high that gives you that wisdom. The most high blesses you with that wisdom. And really it's based on the effort that you try to acquire this truth, that you try and acquire this experience, this knowledge, so that he can bless you with wisdom. And it says, the most high give you wisdom in your heart to judge his people in righteousness. That their good things be not abolished and that their glory may endure forever. I'm going to keep going here, and this will start to make sense. I'll start to tie this all together, right? The Most High gives you wisdom in your lev. That heart there in Hebrew is the lev. That's your, your mind, your soul, your nefesh. And really, we live inside our mind. We live. What we think is how we live. So he says he's give the, the most high gave the, gave Solomon wisdom in his lev, in his soul, in his heart, so that Solomon 
could judge his people in righteousness, can rule his people in righteousness. King Solomon sought out wisdom. And if you do some, if you go through uh, Wisdom of Solomon, Songs of Solomon, um, and these Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes, you start to see that Solomon was always seeking the answer to life, a particular kind of life in every aspect of life. And when he was anointed, he asked the most high for the wisdom of all of that seeking that he was doing. Give me wisdom and understanding so that I can rule your people the way you want them ruled based on all this heritage that was passed down from generation to generation to generation. Wisdom is an inheritance. It's a blessing. It's a gift from the most high, but you got to seek it. You got to search it out. You got to be diligent. And like Sirach said, you got to be somewhat addicted to seeking it out. Wisdom is a gift from the most high, but we have to seek her out chiefly as the principal thing. So let's go to Proverbs. We're going to go back to chapter one, and we're going to read verse 20. I don't think that's not what I want. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter three. Proverbs chapter three, just turn over one. Proverbs chapter three. And we're going to start at verse 13. Remember, wisdom is a gift from the most high, but we have to seek her out as the principal thing, as the chief thing. So at Mishli, or Proverbs chapter three, starting at verse 13. And it reads, happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Verse 14, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. She, wisdom, is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. There is no comparison to her wisdom. Whatever you desire, it can't compare to how your desire should be for wisdom. That word happy is esher, esher. And it really means blessedness. It means relieved in whoever finds her. Whatever else there is that is pleasing or desirable, it can't compare to her wisdom. Let's go over one more chapter, chapter four. I'm gonna read verses five through 13. Mishlei, Proverbs chapter four, starting at verse five. Verse five, and it reads, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Now, just a little bit of background. Um, most scholars say that this is King Solomon's is writing most of these Proverbs, that's him. And, and the picture is he's got um, his children, but really he's a father figure to the nation of Israel the nation of Israel, he's a father figure and he's teaching them, he's passing down these proverbs, all right? So at verse, uh, where are we at? Chapter five, uh, chapter four, verse five. Mm -hmm. 
So it says, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not wisdom, and she shall preserve thee. Love her wisdom, and she shall keep thee. Verse seven, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Discernment, the ability to make functional, told, good choices based on your wisdom, which is based on the knowledge, which is based on the truth and the experience that you acquire, that you're seeking out. Exalt her and she shall, she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee, she shall bring thee to honor. When thou, when thou dost embrace her, this is wisdom. It's talking about wisdom and it's giving it the characteristics of her nurturing, protective. She shall give to thee, she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall be, shall she deliver to thee. Verse 10, hear, O my son, and receive my sayings. And the years of thy life shall be many. Verse 11, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have taught thee, passed it down as a heritage, something cherished, worthy to be passed down. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. If you acquire that wisdom, if you attend, if you attend to that wise counsels that Solomon was talking about. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her for, for she is thy life. Wisdom is thy life. Keeps you from being, and I don't want to be crass, but it keeps you from being foolish. That's the opposite of wise. Is foolish. And remember, we're talking about heritage. We're talking about inheritance. And wisdom is part of that. It's cultural to us. Verse 14, enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away. This is King Solomon passing wisdom down to his son, his heritage. He's given his son heritage. He's passing his heritage along to his son. And really, like I said, this is King Solomon passing this on to the children of Israel as a father figure. He's passing his heritage on so that it might, so that his son might inherit life, a particular kind of life, a Torah way of life. This is why getting wisdom is the principal thing. And while we're seeking her out, not letting silver and gold distract us, the Most High will gladly bless us with wisdom. It's what he set us apart for. When this inheritance, this heritage, with this heritage comes a duty. A duty that we're charged to execute effectively. And we saw that wisdom is the ability to readily execute this duty. 
Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter four, verses five through eight. And I'll get to the close. Deborim or Deuteronomy chapter four. And we're going to start at verse five. All right, we're at Deborim, commonly called Deuteronomy, chapter four, starting at verse five, and it reads, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yah, my Elohim, commanded me, that we should do so in the land, whether ye go to possess it. Six, keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom. For this is your wisdom and your understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing, get that wisdom, but in all that getting, get understanding. These laws, statutes, and commandments is our wisdom and our understanding. That's our culture. That's our way of life. It's a heritage that is worthy to be passed down generation to generation as a duty. It says, keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely, surely this great nation, Yisrael, this great nation is a wise, is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is, is there so great, Yisrael, who hath the most high so nigh unto them as Yah, our Elohim, is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, all this Torah, which I set before you this day. This is walking in all his ways. This is our culture that the Most High set, up, set apart for a purpose, Quadash. Wisdom is supposed to be on display so that the nations will see our Elohim and desire to walk in all his ways also. Mm -hmm. Just like Yisrael. One last script and I'll close. Let's go to Yeshia, Isaiah, chapter two. And we're gonna read from the top. We're gonna start at the top. So Isaiah, Yeshia, chapter two, from the top. This is future prophecy, by the way. This is, this is going to happen. All right, we're at Yeshia, commonly called Isaiah, chapter two, and we're starting at the top. The word that Yeshia, Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, many people, not just Yisrael, many people shall say, Come ye and let us go up to the mountain of Yah, to the house of the Elohim of Yaquah, Jacob, commonly or better known as Yisrael. And he will teach us of his ways. 
and he and and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth Torah, the law, and the word of Yah from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, all the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. And that learn right there is practice it, carry it out. <clears throat> this is why the Most High set us apart. <clears throat> this is what is going to make all the nations want to come to the mountain of, of Yah. Mm -hmm. Because they see how we live. And just like Moshe told us at, at Mount Sinai, well, right before we crossed over into the land of milk and honey, he said, this is your wisdom and your understanding in front of the nations. This is what the most I want you to display to the nations so that when it shall come to pass, all these nations will flow into the most high and there'll be no war no more. but we got to cherish it. And like we said, Deuteronomy 28, all those blessings is our inheritance. All those curses are our inheritance. Wisdom is our inheritance. Wisdom is part of our culture. It's supposed to be on display. And if we cherish the laws, statutes, and commandments as a heritage worthy to be passed down, that's when we get our inheritance. Hello, y'all. Yeah. All right, Mishpaka. Um, I pray that it was just thought provoking, at least, and that you learned something. And at this time, at this time, we're going to turn it over for the two-minute warning. Don't knock you I'll switch places with you so you get the microphone. I'm going to use it. <laughs> 